So this is near St Mary, um, St Mary's Church, and uh, I'm coming up now, I think, to the centre part of Gloucester, uh, where I suspect the cathedral is through there. That to me looks like a bar gate. Interestingly enough, you know where you are in the centre of Gloucester because there's North Gate, South Gate, East Gate, and West Gate. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's pretty simple. That's St Mary's Church behind us. There. Have I zoomed you in? Yes. Still getting used to this, I do apologise. Uh, the other thing is, he incidentally is looking east, away from the church, this is the east end, to, through what looks like a bar gate to me, I imagine. Just look at the way that house is stood. Bizarre, isn't it? Um, I imagine that's a bar gate, which means probably the cathedral's right behind this. <clears throat> I have, in fact, been to Gloucester once before, uh, in a time before any of the cameras. 1999, it was a birthday treat, and uh, we did a lot of the museums, apparently, including Gloucester Cathedral. Don't have almost no recollection of the day at all. Uh, the only recollection of the day I have um, is of the cathedral. And all I remember of that is that it's, one, reasonably dark inside the cathedral, and two, the pillars that hold it up inside are incredibly fat. That's all I remember, so I'm hoping to refresh my memory very shortly. I almost certainly shouldn't be recording in here. Um, first, because I don't think I... Uh, I think they, you have to have a pass to record. Um, and secondly, because I just don't in churches. But uh, this is Gloucester Cathedral and I'm in a little chapel. It's their military chapel. Um, it is on the north east side the, of, of the trans, uh, sorry, of the um, ambulatory. Uh, it's beautiful, isn't it? They have four books of remembrance here. Two uh, for the war. I imagine they turn a page every day. And the other two are for the regiments that they support. The Gloucestershire Royal Hussars. And uh, the other one is Gloucestershire something or other. Um, so they're local. The flags you see hanging there, they will stay there until they fall apart. They're made sort of to fall apart eventually, but they do take years. Um, you can see those outside. If I zoom in, are where the threads have finally fallen out. They're in memory of service people or events, and they just stay there until they completely decay away. It's beautiful, it really is. Again, I shouldn't be recording, but I cannot help myself. So, you come in to Gloucester Cathedral on the uh, south west side. Obviously, it's great, west doors are shut. And you walk down the nave with the really fat pillars. Uh, it does have a choir screen. Um, if you start the ambulatory and you go round on the south side, you'll find most of it is dedicated to various different chapels. And there's one to St Andrews, there's several that have been restored. Um, very, very lovely. Entrance to crypt and tower, but they are by um, tour only. Although I understand some of the tours are uh, free, um, you still have to sort of book and be there at certain times. Uh, carrying on around the choir area, uh, and you get to the Lady Chapel, which is at the back, behind the east end of the choir. It's huge! It is so large that it has two little side chapels. Um, at its east end as well. It is huge. It, just to put it into perspective, their Lady Chapel is larger than the Mariner's Chapel that I spoke of earlier. The interesting thing about this church is that it does have a north and a south transept, but no door. 
you can't get out of the door. It's a, it's a cross-shaped building, but there are no doors. Um, anyway, if you then carry on around the ambulatory, you get to the north side, and that is mainly dedicated to the military chapels and to this, which is their triforium. They have opened their triforium. So I've crossed the, uh, the, the Lady Chapel, which is behind that, that stained glass window, is where the end of the choir stalls are. Beyond that is the Lady Chapel, and you see the little door there, which runs across the back to the other side. That's the Triforium sort of bridge, so to speak. So I'm back on the south side now. Um, and the only other place to check when I get down here lies on the north east side where I believe they have a sort of connection to uh, their chapter house. Uh, I think they have cloisters um, and because this was a uh, foundation, it was a, mount, a monastery originally, monastic foundation dedicated to St Peter, um, they probably have what's left of that there as well. It's, it, this is brilliant. I mean, they, they use their triforium like most cathedrals for storage. This sign, this insignia, keeps popping up. It must be uh, some bishop, because that looks like, you know, his store, whereas, you know, there could be canons, residential canons or something. But I've seen a chair on its own on the other side with that uh, insignia on the back. So, absolutely beautiful. I am actually going to have to go, I think, and pay uh, for a, a, a photography license because I feel dreadful having taken the uh, unorthodox for me step of recording inside a church which feels wrong <laughs> I am strongly of the opinion that if you want to come and see this get off your arse and uh, uh, come and have a look this is one of the cathedrals though that does not charge for entry so, you know, it deserves uh, my, my money. And this is free entry, so anybody can come in and look at this. It's, you don't have to pay to get in, so I don't feel quite so bad in recording. Um, you know, I don't do that if you have to pay to get in, because you should pay uh, to keep these buildings with us. They cost thousands to run, just in lighting and heating. So don't you go giving a pound in the box, you know, it's a fiver or a tenner, please. Um, so I'm going to do that in the gift shop on the way out. Uh, then uh, I shall feel okay in doing this. So now uh, I'm going to head back down. I'm not doing the tours of the crypt or the tower, but I am going to head now to the uh, cloisters if I can. So these are the cloisters down here. They're fully intact. That's the cathedral there. I imagine the chapter house and the vet, the sort of what's left of the monastery are on the other side, but I'm over the other side. These are little gardens in the middle. Look at that. This has to be, this has fast become one of my favourite cathedrals. I still don't remember anything of this from visiting this in 1999. Apart from the fat pillars, I have this horrible feeling that we sort of walked in the door, sort of poked them in the nave, and then disappeared. I don't think we, we did anything else. Um, I think that might be why I have no recollection of this place at all. <laughs> but it is beautiful. It is worth a visit. There is also a king here, Edward the Second, I think. Uh, he's buried here. It's he's quite an early king because most of the uh, kings, obviously, and queens are at Westminster Abbey. But you have to remember that he wasn't long after, uh, you know, one kingdom in this island. There was originally three. Uh, Northumbria in the north, Mercia sort of across this area, the central bit, and Wessex in the south, and it's the House of Wessex that eventually sort of uh, established itself and was then obliterated in 1066. This abbey, in fact, was founded uh, by a close relation 
to uh, one of the kings of Mercia. So it's not even a foundation that was, you know, um, originated. You, it's not even part of the lineage. Um, and whilst Edward obviously will be of Wessex and Normandy descent, um, he's early enough, really, to be buried elsewhere before they all started to cram themselves into the abbey. So there we are. Time to go and get a drink, I think, perhaps lunch, because that over there is without doubt the coffee shop. <laughs>